Welcome everyone to another episode of Journaling with Movement. This is episode four. If you've missed the first three, I will link them in the description below. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're doing this in conjunction with Heart Journal Magazine. It is a wonderful digital online art journaling magazine filled with artist interviews and how-tos, inspiration, free downloads. There's all sorts of things. It's a wonderful, wonderful magazine. I've done an interview for them and an article. This video here that you're watching is part of that. So if you would like to see the full article, I will again click that and I'll link that in the description below and you can click on that and go over there. I recommend that you subscribe if you can. It's again a great magazine. I am here working with yet another idea for journaling with movement and in this particular episode I wanted to review what we've already done briefly and then explore another idea for journaling with movement on our page and emphasizing our message or our artistic point of view with movement on the page. Now here I have my moleskin um, daily planner thing that I picked up at Goodwill and I've already collaged a few vintage pieces of paper, um, some notes with my handwriting on them where I was testing a pen and a couple little pieces of deli print onto the paper. And I do think that um, although the pieces are laid out in a vertical pattern, I do think that despite that, that it's going to work for what I want, which I'll describe in just a minute. We're going to go back and review the other movements. Um, first, we did horizontal, where we really emphasized across the page, um, speaking to our viewer and emphasizing our message with our elements moving in a horizontal motion across the page. This whole process is not about covering up the entire page. You can if you want, um, but it is about uh, working with the negative space and putting elements on your page, uh, regardless of how you're doing them, in a way that really make the main message pop out, that they don't overshadow it or make things too confusing. I've done a lot of different work in this book, and... Um, you can see some of the wax where I've waxed some of the pages. It's made the paper a little bit of a little bit transparent, but I'm actually kind of liking that, and I like the messy artistic goodness in the book that comes from doing that. And um, so we started with horizontal movement, and then we moved to vertical movement, and I really really love this page. Uh, this is episode two. Uh, where we worked with vertical movement and moving the viewer's eye up the page um, to emphasize our message and our point of view on I love the way this one turned out. And then we did diagonal movement, which I found really interesting. I love the idea of diagonal movement and the little bubbles dancing across the page in a diagonal pattern really, really appealed to me. And it definitely inspired the page that we're going to do now. I was doing this diagonal page thinking to myself as I'm doing it, I really need to do a page where we have dancing movement on the page, where we have movement on the page that's dancing around up and down across the page, not at all in a straight line, emphasizing highs and lows in life and in art. And it really appealed to me so strongly, I tried to do something else and it just wouldn't let me go. The whole idea of it wouldn't let me go. So we're going to do a page with dancing movement and um, expressive movement across the page. We're going to start to combine the other three lessons into um, a new and unique movement. Uh, for this page, I really decided that I wanted to honor the memory of my grandmother uh, by coincidence, I started making this page and got word from Heart Journal Magazine um, to uh, work on this article with them on February 1st, which is my grandmother's birthday. She died in 2014. She was 99 years old, and um, she was the wisest, smartest, most brilliant, beautiful woman I've ever known. 
and we all loved her very much and she's still missed. So I decided to honor her in this page. I still have quite a number of her things that to most people, um, they would just donate to Goodwill or throw out, but I have uh, books stuffed with notes in her handwriting and grocery lists, address books, um, old pieces of paper, all sorts of things like that. So I decided for this page that having this old book text and the botanical print that's on here um, really would fit for what I wanted. I really have lots of memories of my grandmother spending time in her garden. Um, she was always with her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren in the garden or in the kitchen, always having big family dinners around her table. And I thought that the happenstance of the papers that were already on here was going to lend itself very well to what was going to happen in the page. So here are a few pictures of my grandparents um, at their wedding. And uh, the little baby is my dad. Um, he was a very fat little baby. And my grandmother in her at her 90th birthday, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And here's her in her garden with some of her great grandchildren. And this is how I remember her. This is the grandmother I remember. So we're going to honor that. As a child in their house, um, I used to get in trouble constantly by both of my grandparents for playing with their fuchsia plants. I used to be one of those children that loved to go over to the fuchsia plants and pop open all the flowers. And I was constantly getting in trouble for popping open all the flowers. Um, and if we weren't doing that as a group, that grandchildren, especially the granddaughters, we're over shaking the plum tree so we can get all the plums off and then eat them before grandma could even wash them. So, um, but popping the fuchsia plants um, and the flowers and sometimes bees would come out and it was a lot of fun. And that's what I remember. And I remember her, uh, even when we were getting in trouble, she was so sweet. So I want to use that memory to create my page. So I'm going to grab some paints that remind me of her and being in her garden and the fuchsia plants, the colors of the fuchsia plants, the colors of her garden. I'm thinking of circular shapes um, that in an abstract sort of way remind me of fuchsia flowers. So I grab a pink, a blue, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, a pink, a purple, a couple of greens and a yellow. Um, I'll include the exact brands of paint and the uh, colors in the description for you along with all the other materials that I've used. If I forget something you guys ask me and let me know um, I will get right back to you. So here we are going to create dancing movement across the page. So the first thing I'm going to do is with my um, black ballpoint pen. It's just a plain old Bic ballpoint pen. I want to imagine that there's a horizontal line on the page and create dancing movement above and below the line. Um, as in art and life, there are highs and lows. And even in the lowest times, my grandmother still was a very sweet woman. And I want to honor and respect that. And so we are going to create this dancing movement above and uh, below that horizontal and imaginary line, dancing its way across the page um, with these uh, circles and marks. Um, at least that's how we're going to start. Um, and I don't remember now, as I'm doing the voiceover, if I did the paint first or the black pen first, I might have done the paint first. Um, that's very possible. And I do think I start out with a brush, but it doesn't take me long to get my fingers involved. Because, you know, it's paint and who doesn't love paint? I do, as you say, as you see, have plastic um, uh, boards in between my pages to protect the pages below. They're cut from plastic cutting boards from the dollar store and they're cut to fit the journal. So um, any thin plastic will work or a piece of deli paper. Um, I do find that very handy. If you're new to art journaling, you should really have something like that to protect your other pages. So I initially get out a couple of filberts, a little one and a slightly bigger one. And I start with the pink and I just start painting circles on the page. Again, it doesn't take me long to just start getting my fingers involved and want to um, smear the paint a little bit and um, get rid of some of the brush strokes. So getting putting the paint on there with a brush, but then getting my fingers involved helps me get a better circular shape, but it also helps me get rid of some of those brush strokes. I like uneven numbers and things. I find it more interesting. 
Um, so I'm going to not stop at four. I'm going to add a fifth one. And you'll notice, again, if we're imagining a horizontal line across the page, the circular dots are above and below the horizontal line. They're dancing across the page and kind of forcing your eye to dance across the page. I'm going to add some purple. If you've ever seen a fuchsia flower, they're pink and purple with little bits of yellow. And then I'm going to take a small dotting tool and um, add uh, the yellow in after I'm done adding the green in. So, and I couldn't decide on what color of green, so I decided to add two colors of green. Uh, one is an Americana paint and one is a Dini Wakely paint. I'm just being very random about it too. I'm not being very, very precise on purpose. And so now we're gonna add some yellow. The yellow gives it a really nice bright pop, which it kind of needs. And this page takes on a life of its own and it really goes through a lot of changes before it's finished. And that's okay. Journaling is always a process, whether you're working out feelings about something or you're just playing and having fun. It's always a process and it's okay to just enjoy the process and follow along with that process. Now here we're taking the black ballpoint pen, just a plain old big pen, and I am not really waiting for things to dry, although I probably should, I'm not. And I am, without lifting the pen up very much, I'm circling each pink circle and then tracking um, down to the next circle and then going up to the next circle to start to create that visual dancing line that's traveling along the page. It kind of reminds me of the lines on an EKG when you're getting your um, heart looked at and you see the EKG paper come out of the machine and it's got that up and down line. I didn't think of that until after I had the page done and I thought, oh wow, that looks like an EKG reading. <laughs> so you can only really do so much of that until after the paint dries and then you can do more, um, which I've done, and I'm gonna do more even. I wanna make the lines darker. I want them to stand out more from the background than they do. And so we are going to, we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So you'll see me go through again, go through a process. Now I'm gonna take in each one of those little pink circles, I'm gonna re journal about a memory of my grandmother, something that I miss about her, something that I loved about her and that I miss about her. Uh, her sense of faith, her sense of family, um, the smell of her kitchen, um, her smile. Um, so each one of the little pink circles has a different little message to myself about what I've missed about her. And then, uh, while I'm doing that, I'm also adding more black circular shapes um, or circular marks around the painted shapes with my black pen. And I, I do end up doing this over and over and over again. It's just... Uh, it really does sort of remind me of a heartbeat. Anyway, so here I am making those little notations of memory about her in each one of the um, pink circles. You have to really make sure that the paint is dry before you do this and you write over it. Um, if you don't, it's going to frustrate you and clog up the pen. So um, I do write little single word memories in the, some of the green dots too. Um, and when you're doing a piece like this, it's really easy to think of the negative things about the person passing. Try to remember the good things and the things that you loved about them, the things about them that brought light into your life. And that's what I try to do here in this case. That last one was really hard to think of something to write. Here we go. 
So next, I have a collection of my grandmother's books that nobody wanted. Again, I said before, address books, little small Bibles. All of them are stuffed with prayer cards and notes and little bits and pieces of paper, flowers that she'd stuffed in the book. And every single book I've gotten from her house has had that. So I am showing you a few of them here. It doesn't, I did pull that particular card out because that needs to be on a future journaling page. Um, I did not even know that was in there until I was filming this. Um, anyway, so these are just some of her old address books. So I just pull a page out. I think most of the writing is hers. Some of it may be my Aunt Sylvia's writing, one of her daughters, um, and that's fine. Um, but I pull some of the writing out and just pull a random page, and I'm going to cut it up into circles, and we are going to um, at some point put that onto our background. Right here I'm adding some white marks. I just feel like we need to add some white. It doesn't honestly quite do what I want it to for the page. Now I could have cut a lot of this out. I could have not explained any of this to you, but that's not me. I want you to see my whole process that I go through to come to the conclusion of the page that I made. As I'm doing this, I've got some of her favorite music playing in the background, which happened to be Andrea Bocelli, um, which we both love. And um, Italian operatic music. She loved uh, Christmas um, church music. And I've got some of that playing in the background. And I am really just, again, going through a process to figure out how I can get this page to have the movement I want and have it say what I want, whether it's with markers or pens or something. I am here trying to find different pens to add different marks to the page that I think will do what I want. I'm thinking initially making the black darker and there's something on that one corner on the left side. It just does not want me to write on it and I don't know if it's the matte medium or what. I don't know. So I initially think just making it darker would work and it does kind of but it doesn't give me what I want. but I, I figure I'll try. I th and I look at it and I think, well, that's close. It's not exactly right. I get that little piece of address book paper out. I start cutting circles out of it. And I think, okay, well, I know I want to have this on here somewhere. I know the background's getting a little busy. I'm covering up more of the page than I normally do. Some pages are just happen to be like that, and that's okay. Uh, but I know I want this paper on there. For me, the background works because it's all very muted and monotone. This is a picture of my grandmother when she was about 20. And I printed it out on my little small LG pocket photo printer. And I'm going to get her down there at the same time that I glue these circles of um, old paper down. Got to flip everything together because my protector keeps sliding out. I am using a glue stick to stick the um, address book paper down. I don't want to get wet glue out because honestly, I don't want to wait for things to dry to continue on. I'm layering some of the circles on top of each other. And I'm using Yoohoo glue stick. I do know I want to put some writing across the line connecting all of our pink circles across the dancing line and I initially thought I was going to use that green gel pen you see to the side. I end up not using that pen because it's not dark enough. And I, I'm just using the glue stick and make sure that you really push hard and that you get that stuck down there really well. Uh, the paper I used on the pocket photo printer was adhesive paper, so I'm peeling the backing off of the paper and then sticking the image down, making sure all my edges are stuck down well. And here you see me trying to use that green pen, and I'm just like, it's really just not dark enough. So then I start looking for another pen to do what I want one that is not too fat and is 
the right color. I initially think maybe I should do black and then I'm thinking, no, I don't like the black. <laughs> so again, it's a process and this is normal. And if you're doing this when you're making journal pages and you're thinking I've done something wrong, it's just taking me too long. I'm too indecisive. No, you're not. So here I found a green paint pen. I do believe it's a Posca pen. And I write something along, a personal message from me to her along the black line, the sort of heartbeat line of this dancing page. And it's not about anybody ever reading it or anything. Um, it's about a message from her, from me to her. And again, me working through those feelings I have of how much I miss her. Now, I do decide that at some point I need to push the background into the back back a little bit so those pink circles in her photo stand out more. Um, I also know I want a quote on the page. I'm always about quotes on pages um, and I have a box of quotes, some of which are from her estate and I found boxes of quotes that she also kept. I did not know she did that until after she passed. Um, so here I'm just cut, cutting some plain white paper to protect the images. I don't want to get the white paint on. And this is a little plastic container of just random brands of white paint. I mix them together. Uh, you know, you have those mostly empty tubes that have got just a little bit of paint in them. Yeah, I put them all in this little bucket. And I'm using a baby wipe to just spread a little bit of it around on the background. And my head's going to get in the way a little bit here. And I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm trying really hard to not get my head in the way. But I'm holding those circles down and then rubbing the white paint around on the background to just push some of that busyness back so that we see the pink circles and her photo stand out more and the quote eventually when I get it on there. Now, if you get some of this paint on a part of the page that you didn't intend it to, like I got a little bit of it here on her picture, um, really quick, go in there with the baby wipe and um, just wipe it away, wipe it back before it dries and you'll be fine. And then I can just, I'm going back in very gingerly, sort of, and putting some more white on there to just really push it back. The white's going to dry a bit more translucent than it's showing up here. Um, it doesn't actually come out as opaque, um, and um, but it, it provides the effect that I want of pushing that busyness back. You still see it, you know, it's there, um, but the other things stand out more prominently. I do want to bring back some of those black lines and make them a bit darker again. So I do that here with the big pen. And then we're going to let that dry and I'm going to look for a quote for my page. I have a box of quotes that I'm going to dig through and I find one that's perfect. And I've just cleaned up the page with a baby wipe and that's really looking the way I really want it to. I've got the dancing movement. Um, I've got that heartbeat line, so to speak, across the page. Her picture is right there um, at the beginning of the line, which is exactly what I wanted. So here I found a quote by Abraham Lincoln, actually, that we're going to use on the page. And I'm going to cut it apart so that it is in separate lines instead of a block. I initially think I'm going to put it by her photo. That's not what I end up doing. <laughs> Again, I <coughs> excuse me. Again, I am gluing it down with a glue stick because I don't want to be bothered to wait for anything to dry at all. Because, yeah, I just can't be bothered with that. I use Yoohoo glue, but um, Elmer's um, glue sticks work really well, too. Um, Elmer's Extreme Glue, especially. Um, you can glue it down with Tacky Glue or Matte Medium, if you would prefer. You could also staple it down, or maybe you have a couple of... Um, you know, if you're doing it with your from your grandmother, maybe you have a couple of her hairpins and you could use them to attach it to the page um, or sewing pins or, you know, don't be afraid to get any of those little bits of memorabilia involved in uh, attaching these things to your page.
So here I was going out to the other room to dig out uh, my little memory book of funeral cards I have of loved ones I know who have passed um, to get the, her exact um, date of birth and death um, uh, for the page because I wanted to make sure I had that on the page. I wanted to put the quote in the upper right and to balance that out and to keep our movement balanced, I wanted to put um, in memory of in the lower left. So that's what we're going to do now. You don't have to do this. I could have left it just the way it was. Um, the movement across the page is prominent. Um, it shows up really well. It's exactly what I wanted. Um, and I am doing the writing in a black ballpoint pen so that it's there, but it's not as bright and is detracting from the movement in the page as it would be if I did it, say, in pink, like the circles. So I hope that you experiment with movement in your journal and that you have fun uh, with the process and you explore the process of creating movement in your journals and expression in your art. And, you know, remembering those people, places, and things that are no longer with us in your art. For me, art is part of therapy, my personal um, form of therapy and the way that I work out my feelings about things. And I know it can be that for you too. So I hope this gives you another idea of what you can do. Uh, don't forget to go check out Heart Journal Magazine. And the most important thing, go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.